The results are in. Okay, that's cliche to say, but I had to say it. Black Magic Design has changed the game again. The A10 Mini Pro takes what many have come to love about the affordability of the Mini and adds some features that for many people are just absolutely necessary. When the Mini came out in 2019, it came with a bang. Prior to the Mini's release, we didn't have an affordable video switcher, at least not one that starts to approach the broadcast quality features that many want. Typically, you'd be looking at $1,000 plus for a simple 4 camera video switcher. With the ATEM Mini, all of that changes. Now you have a 4 channel video switcher with audio in and even the ability to use Blackmagic's advanced keyer, picture in picture, and more. All for just around $300. Not to mention the fact that you can output from the ATEM Mini straight into a computer to use as a webcam within Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, OBS, Wirecast, whatever you're using. If it can use a webcam, it can work with the ATEM Mini. So what's the catch? Well, for $300, Blackmagic did leave out some things that, for those who are used to more expensive solutions, they snuffed their nose at the idea of even using a device like this. For example, the ATEM Mini did not have the ability to output a multi-view. A multi-view allows you to see all of your inputs in live time on a screen so that you can know what is on each input before selecting that input as your main output. This is huge. If you have three cameras spread out around the room that you're streaming from or in another room entirely, you wouldn't be able to see what was happening on each of those three camera screens at one time, not without using a multi-viewer out. It's very difficult to switch video and be confident in what you're switching to if you can't see what you're switching to. But in April 2020, things have changed. Blackmagic Design has announced and released the A10 Mini Pro. The A10 Mini Pro changes the game again. They've taken every feature that people wanted with the regular Mini and packed them into this beauty. So let's show off the hardware a little bit. Starting with the back of the device, we've got your two 3.5mm microphone inputs. Your audio for these could come from a computer, phone, the output of a camera, or audio interface if you wanted to. But the HDMI input also accepts audio, so if your camera is providing the audio, you could always just send it with the HDMI signal. Next we've got four HDMI inputs. These can take in signals of up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. One of the huge benefits of using this switcher over some more expensive ones even from Blackmagic is that the HDMI inputs are auto switching. You don't have to go into the ATEM software or through a complicated menu system on the hardware to define what resolutions and FPS your camera or device signal is sending. For me and my testing, this was huge because as I was changing the settings on my camera between 24p, 29.97p, and 59.94p, it automatically detected and worked with my changes right away. Now the ATEM Mini Pro cannot output 4K or even input 4K. So let's say you have a 4K capable video camera or interchangeable handheld lens camera, you won't be able to output 4K from those. You will need to use a 1080p signal out. So one thing for sure to consider is are you going to need 4K in the future? Well this device may work for you now, but you'd need to replace it when you want to switch to 4K signal flow. I think for the price, that's not a big hit to the budget if you need to replace it with something capable of 4K in the future. Next on the back, we've got the HDMI out. Now this is where things get a little crazy. One of the biggest feature adds in the A10 Mini Pro is the ability to have a multi-view out. So now you can use the HDMI out to send signal to external computer monitor, uh, TV screens, or calibrated multi-view straight from the switcher. Like I talked about earlier, this is simply a huge feature add. Being able to move the switcher to another room and have more focus, or even keeping it in your main presentation room but having the ability to see what's in the view of your camera is so important. The HDMI out can also be sent to show your program or main output, as well as preview if you're using a program preview switching mode. The next output is probably my favorite. You've got USB 3.1 Type-C output. Actually, I think it's USB 2.0 uh, Type-C. This lets you go straight into a computer via USB-C so that you can use your switcher's main output or program output as it's called in the broadcast industry inside of your favorite apps that have video inputs. For example, we can use the ATEM as an input in ProPresenter. This is where things get fun. If you enable that input in ProPresenter, 
you can then put lower third lyrics right over top of your video feed without ever even having to go into another program for keying the lower thirds. Of course, if you want to use lower thirds as lyrics but don't want to input the video signal into your computer and would rather use a hardware encoder or the switcher itself as an encoder, then you can definitely use the switcher's built-in keyer for chroma or luma key. So yeah, the USB-C function is powerful. It gets rid of the need for external capture hardware to be able to input your video feed into a computer for live streaming, using a webcam, or even with, it, with ProPresenter itself. The only thing I did notice in my testing is that the video signal coming out of uh, the USB-C into a computer isn't quite as good as if you were to use more, a more broadcast quality video capture device like a Decklink Duo. There, there also is about a half second lag between the video inputs going into the switcher and the video feed that you'd see on a computer. In live streaming world, even a few seconds of lag doesn't matter. There's no lag that I noticed coming out of the HDMI port at least, so that's good. Now the last two things on the back are your ATEM control Ethernet port and the connector for powering on and uh, powering on the device. The Ethernet port, when connected to a computer, allows you to do two things. One, control the setting of the switcher um, with the ATEM software control. But even more importantly, with the introduction of the Pro model, you can now stream directly to an online source from the switcher itself. Yes, you heard that correct. You no longer have to go from the switcher into a separate hardware encoder or into a computer and then through a software encoder. Now you can simply plug in your streaming key through the ATEM software and go live straight from the ATEM Mini Pro itself. That's huge, that's a money saver and a time saver and you no longer have to worry about maintaining separate hardware or software, which also is huge. Now one caveat to that is by default, only Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch are enabled within the ATEM software, but there is a way to edit the XML file to add the ability to stream to a custom RTMP server. Just from looking at the back side, as you can see, there are a ton of capabilities with this switcher. Um, it's great for schools, nonprofits, and churches. Moving to the front, there are a lot of buttons. I'm going to skip over some because there are so many duplicated buttons that it'll all make sense when I'm done. On the top section, we've got the two audio inputs from the back. You can choose to have one or both on or off as needed, as well as volume up or down buttons. Below that, we've got your video input selection area. The one, two, three, and four are to select which video input you're going to use. Above the corresponding input number is the audio options for that channel. Again, you have the on, off, up and down buttons, but above that, you also have a reset button to bring your volume back to unity. Finally, there is an AFV button, which means audio follow video. If that is selected on a channel, then when the input is live, the audio on that channel will be live as well. When you switch away to a different input, the audio will no longer be live on that previously selected channel. If all of your audio is coming into one source, you'll want to make sure that the only oh, sorry, you'll make sure that only that source has the audio turned on and no sources have AFV. To the right of the four inputs, we've got a button for recalling stills as well as a blackout button. Yes, that says still. You can't queue up videos from the media player built into this device, so video files are not supported. Now again, depending on your use case, you may not ever need to use the switcher's built-in media anyway. If you're using ProPresenter or ProVideoPlayer as an input, all you have to do is play a video from that software, so you don't have to worry about keeping the media within the switcher itself. Now the black button uh, simply switches you to a black signal, and it follows whatever effect transition you have selected. So if you have the cut transition selected, your feed will cut straight to black without a fade. Next, we have the effects transition section. There is a large button to cut straight between your inputs as well as multiple different transition effects you can apply. With the switcher, they give you the option to set a duration of 0.5, 1, 1.5, and two seconds. The auto button enables the effect that is selected to transition when switching between your different inputs. There's also a fade to black button if you want to end a stream on black. The last thing that we have in this bottom section is the ability to control what is going out of the HDMI out on the back. You can preview one of the inputs, view the main program out, or even more importantly, you can see the output, uh, you can set the output to be a multi-view. Uh, for my use case, the multi-view is generally what I keep this on, but if I need to see an input larger to check detail of my shot, then I can also select one of the inputs here to see it on my screen. Back to the top is your picture in picture section, also known as PIP. This is where you can layer an input from uh, one of your sources on top of a different input source. 
This is used a lot when you want a talking head in a small portion of your screen, but are showing off software or something else. Uh, some churches use this to put their full screen lyrics onto a live stream, but that is better suited for lower thirds, which is next on the list. One thing to note about picture in picture is that the first input um, on the ATEM is the one that overlays as a pip. I don't think that's changeable, but maybe it is. To the right of that, we've got the on and off key for the keyer. This is where if you wanted to do a chroma or luma key, you could set that up and could turn it on as needed. So if you pipe your ProPresenter lyrics back to the ATEM via HDMI and use a screen, uh, sorry, a green background, you can use the keyer to show the lower thirds and apply that on top of a video input. Finally, we've got two of the neatest additions introduced with the Pro model. There's a button for record and stop. You can use the USB-C on the back to record to a solid state drive. There are also buttons for streaming. You can go on air or turn off the stream. This is one of the neatest things about this because now the switcher is both a video switcher and a hardware encoder. You can stream directly from this device without a need for a computer to be plugged in at the time of the stream. In order to make the changes to the settings, as with anything on the switcher though, you would need to plug it into a computer and use the ATEM desktop software. You'd also need to have the ethernet plugged in to a network in order to stream out. So that is the ATEM Mini Pro's hardware. Blackmagic Design's ability to pack all this hardware into the small footprint with such a low price is incredible. Sure, there are some flaws or features that I think some more demanding setups may ask for, but for the average church or even school or business, this is going to be an incredible solution. At around $600, you'll have the ability to switch between four inputs. You don't have to worry too much about the what resolutions or frame weights those devices come in, as since the switcher will also detect that. Two external microphone inputs, picture in picture, a phenomenal keyer and transition effects. But some of the greatest things about the Mini Pro are the new features they added in this model. Uh, one, with the Pro, you have the ability to stream directly from the switcher to an online source. That alone could be an incredible money saver. Two, you've got the ability to record a service or event straight to a hard drive for the highest quality. And three, I think the most valuable addition that was requested from standard Mini users was the ability to see all your camera inputs in some sort of multi-preview setup. Now that is possible with the built-in ability to have a multi-view. All these features bring the ATEM Mini up closer to par with some of the more broadcast quality video switchers out there. Of course, this isn't designed to replace those units, and for people who need the higher quality, they know who they are and, and won't even be looking at this. But for many setups out there, I don't see why this wouldn't be the perfect solution. So the question of would we recommend this is definitely yes. For the setups that would benefit from something like this, definitely. Now, we do have a video coming out soon that will walk you through how to set up the A10 Mini series to ProPresenter to use lower thirds or other content. So, thanks for watching. Uh, we hope this review helps you with deciding if this will be a good solution for you.